Hi there. I'm Paul Clifford. Welcome to Parents, Families, and Friends. Parents, Families, and Friends is a program brought to you by Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. We call it PFLAG. You can find out more about PFLAG by going to the World Wide Web, www.pflag.org, www.pflag.org. PFLAG has a triple mission of support, education, and advocacy. Support for gay and lesbian people, bisexuals and transgenders. Support for their families, particularly parents who first learn that their child might be gay or lesbian or transgender. Education of the broader society and advocacy for fundamental human rights for their loved ones. One of those fundamental rights is a right to marriage. In the state of California, the Supreme Court recently handed down a ruling recognizing the fundamental right of marriage for all citizens, including gay and lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered citizens. That's a dramatic change in California law. Now gay or lesbian couples can get married, and they have been getting married in droves in just the past month since the law took effect. We're joined tonight by Carol and Susan, a couple who recently got married for the nth time. Now, I, I'm not quite sure how many times that is. The third time to each other. The third time to each other, Carol. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, we hope the third time's a charm. Right. <laughs> yes, I hope so, too. Now, why didn't the first two times take? What, what happened, Carol? Well, <clears throat> the first time we got married was at City Hall in San Francisco in uh, February 2004 when Gavin Newsom announced that San Francisco was going to marry us. So that was very exciting. We didn't, we didn't know that it was going to go on beyond that first day. And when we got up the next morning and heard on the radio that people were still in line to get married, I said to Susan, well, should we go to work or should we get married? <laughs> it was extremely romantic. Now, I assume you've known each other a while. Back yeah. Back. <laughs> <laughs> we'd known each other. We'd been together for 11 years by that point. So there, it was really not a question. It was just a rhetorical question. Now, did that take you by surprise? When, when Gavin Newsom decided to start issuing marriage licenses in the city of San Francisco, it was on Valentine's Day in 2004. Right. And I think a lot of people didn't know that was going to happen. It was actually on um, February 12th that he did that, uh -huh. because that was uh, National Freedom to Marry Day, uh -huh. and, um, which was two days before Valentine's Day. And um, yeah, it, it took us totally by surprise. I mean, we, we, I don't think that we knew that he was going to do that, but we particularly didn't know that it was going to be extended to other people other than those people who were selected to get married that day. So we, of course, always wanted to get married, and we jumped at the opportunity. So we, we got in line uh, the next day. We were married on February 13th around 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. And then after that, we had, you know, we'd been talking for years about having a commitment ceremony or something like that, but we just couldn't figure out when would be a good time or why, you know, why at any given time we would want to do that, even though it seemed like a good idea. But once we had the civil ceremony with none of our friends present, we thought that was a great excuse for having a big wedding at our church with all of our friends and family present. So we did do that on June 19th, 2004. And about 100 people attended that ceremony. Oh, that's wonderful. So June 19th, that's, uh, that has some other significance. That's Juneteenth. Uh, Juneteenth. Juneteenth, that's right. Yes, so it is. Did you choose it for that? No, it was just the, it was a Saturday in, in uh, June that our minister was available. And, <laughs> okay. And our friends and family could come, so that's Lucky we, happenstance. Yeah, lucky happenstance. So as soon as you could get a license, you rushed to the Justice of Peace to get married, and then you rushed to the altar. Well, we, that, was in, that was June 19th, 2004. Mm -hmm. So then when in, in, on May 15th, the Supreme Court made their decision. Of this past year, 2008. The, uh, I'm sorry, 2008. Um, and then it wasn't until June 4th that they actually determined that the marriages would actually go ahead and, and take place and not wait until after November. We had already talked to our minister and we'd talk to each other and decided that we would really like to get married on June 19th again just because we have so many different anniversaries to remember that we were, <laughs> you know, in danger of not being able to remember them all. So we wanted to stick with the same Maybe date. The same, the same day. The same date. So on June 19th, 2008, we got married again, this time legally. 
um, after getting uh, in line the first day that it was possible in San Mateo County, we lined up um, on June um, 17th, 17th, 17th at the uh, county clerk's office, and that was an ex exciting experience too. So in 2004, you were married, um, uh, maybe legally, maybe not legally, but uh, that is a. It was the city of San Francisco. It was Francisco legal in the city of San Francisco right. at the time. Right, the state it had wasn't not until later that it was okay. nullified. Right. So it went into the courts. The courts nullified it, but then that that court battle worked its way up to the, the Supreme Court of California. And uh, did either of you read the decision or? Uh, Yes. I haven't we, read all 172 pages right. of it, but um, I was impressed by by the statement of um, a support for gays and lesbians as, as full and equal citizens, and that um, the state would not take away our rights without the same um, strict scrutiny that they apply to uh, race. That was really impressive, wasn't it? Very yes. impressive. The other thing that impressed me about the decision was the use of the word marriage. Mm -hmm. The court said, call a spade a spade. This is marriage. It's not marriage light. It's not some sort of domestic partnership. It's two people getting married, just like any other two people getting married. Exactly. I was very proud to be a Californian that day. Yes. <laughs> we were too. <laughs> now, tell me a little bit about your, your first wedding in the church. You know. A lot of people don't realize that many churches marry gay and lesbian couples. And, and have done so for a number of years. Um, I think we belong to a Unitarian Universalist church, the Unitarian Universalists of San Mateo. And uh, the Unitarian church, um, I think, was perhaps one of the first to, um, to marry same-sex couples. And, um, well, first of all, when we were ushering the Sunday after we got married in San Francisco and when the minister announced it to our surprise everyone in the church stood up and, and applauded they were so excited for us Wow! and um, and the the wedding that we had in uh, June 19th in 2004 with a hundred of our, our family and friends it was um, it was a real wedding. It was it was wonderful. And there were a lot of people from our church there as well as from other parts of our lives. Do, do you think it changed people's perspective uh, of you, you know, the way they look at you as a couple? I think it did. I think there were people who, you know, maybe just didn't understand why getting married was important to us or you know, what it was that we couldn't have if we didn't get married, but when, once they went to our wedding and saw us there and listened to the ceremony and the words and our commitment, our promises to each other, you know, I had one person in particular walk up to me and said, you know, I really get it now, I really get it. And he hadn't gotten it before. And I always thought he got it before, <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't get it until he actually was he, there. He got it enough to be there. And then right, he, he got it enough to be there. Great in greater richness. Oh, they're right. really married. <laughs> <laughs> what about family? Uh, I think you mentioned, Susan, that you have some kids. Yes, I have uh, three sons, and um, all three of them were at our uh, June wedding in 2004. And um, because the 2008 wedding was on a Thursday afternoon, uh, two of my sons were not able to get away from work to attend. But my oldest son was there, and, and he was one of our witnesses. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Do you think your, your relationship with your sons changed when you got married, or did they, did they see Carol differently, do you think? I think so. I think they, they have a much uh, warmer and closer relationship with me, you know, both after the marriage ceremony in 2004, but um, now as well. I mean, I, it's just like it, in 2004, it was a wonderful wedding. I thought nothing could ever compare with that, but in 2008, um, it was extremely exciting to get married again. It was just like getting married for the first time. And I think that, you know, Susan's sons and our friends, you know, pick up on that excitement and they, it does bring them closer. But you'd been out to them for a long time, Susan, before then? Um, I had actually since, um, 
I think 94, sometime in 94, I came out first to my youngest son. Uh -huh. um, he was watching a program on television about um, gay students in high school who were being harassed for being gay. And his reaction to that was like, well, that's really a stupid reason to, to harass anybody. You know, that's so dumb. And I was not comfortable enough to broach the subject with him at the time. But he was hanging out with some friends who were gay and questioning. And they told him, actually, your mom's gay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I told myself that um, I, I knew that the question was going to come up. And I certainly did not want to lie to any of my children. And so when he, he did ask, um, I, I assured him that that was, that was the case and that uh, um, Carol and I were, were intending to be life partners. And his reaction was, well, that's fine with me, Mom, but don't tell my brothers because I think they're kind of homophobic. And I never did have to come out to them because apparently he had a conversation with them and found out they weren't as homophobic as he thought they were. <laughs> you know, that seems to be a very common reaction. You know, when I told uh, my sister I was gay, uh, she said, oh, but don't tell anyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't tell my son, don't tell your other sister, don't tell Mom. But then she told them all. <laughs> she just couldn't contain herself. Uh -huh. And it was, it was all OK. So f the second time you got married, does it feel different now that California is officially welcoming you to marriage? It definitely, it definitely feels different. I mean, it, it, it makes a big difference knowing that your relationship and your um, basically your whole existence is being affirmed by the state in which you live and the county in which you live as opposed to having your marriage be nullified. <laughs> I mean that was even though we pretty much expected that that was going to happen in 2004 we were very glad that it didn't happen before we got married on June 19th and you know it was still kind of hard to take when it did happen because it's saying no you know, you're not a full citizen of the state. You're a second-class citizen. It's an official act of rejection. It is. Mm -hmm. And this is an official act of saying, you know, you're entitled to equal rights along with everyone else. And your relationship is, you know, valid and honorable, just like everybody else's is. Well, I'd wrap my mind around it intellectually. But I was surprised knowing that our marriage in 2004 would probably be nullified. I was surprised at how much it hurt when it actually happened. And I'm, I'm surprised at, at what a difference it makes that um, we can say we're married and it's legal. Mm -hmm. And a diff that the difference that it makes to other people because when you tell them that we're registered domestic partners, it's like, well, and what does that mean? it sounds like a business arrangement. Right. But when you tell them you're married, everybody gets it. They understand the word marriage. People know, yes. know what that is. Mm -hmm. I think, it, do you think that's why maybe the, the right wing is so opposed to the use of the word marriage? That they understand the, the richness of it, that it really is um, a, a way of talking about couples that everyone understands? I suppose so. I, it, it doesn't make sense to me that anybody living a happy, fulfilling, productive life would have a problem with other people doing the same thing. Yeah, why, why right? should they begrudge you your happiness? Right. Exactly. So I can't help but think that there are a lot of unhappy people out there who can't deal constructively with their own problems. And so they're projecting something off onto another group of people to diffuse the bad energy. Well, that's a pretty ancient story. <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> that's, that's a story of all the isms, the racism right. and tribalisms that, that exactly. infects humanity. Have, uh, have you each been waiting to get married for a long time? I mean, have we, you had the same attitude towards it? Right. We've always, I think we, we've always wanted to get married. I mean, we, I have to say that before I even thought too much about whether I wanted to get married. I knew that getting married was an important civil right for gays and lesbians. When I first came out to myself, that was at the time that Hawaii was struggling with the whole question of same-sex marriage. Right. And um, 
I remember, you know, sending my check off for $50 every year to uh, whatever it was called, the Mar Hawaii Equal Rights Marriage Project. And then that fell through, and so then the civil unions in Vermont came along, and I thought, well, it's not marriage, but, you know, it's a lot closer than we have gotten anywhere else in the United States. So I wrote the check to the <laughs> Vermont Civil Union um, organization. And then when it was when we had the domestic partnerships here in California, when that first went into effect, which I believe was in um, 2000, it was in January of 2000, Susan and I you know, went to the notary pub public and signed up for a domestic partnership the first week that it was available because you know, we talked about it and we thought, well, what if the notary public is a homophobe? And you know, what if they give us a hard time? And I finally said to Susan, you know, we're entitled to this and we can't, let our fear dictate what we do. We need to just go ahead and go to the notary public and get this done because this is important. This is protection for our By relationship. By the way, the, the notary's re reaction was, oh, you're our first couple. Right. This is so cool. Yeah, she was, <laughs> she was very excited about it. So, <laughs> that's you know, wonderful. It, it, there was no, nothing to be afraid of. Well, maybe that shows that a lot of our fear is internalized. That, it's definitely you know, we, we internalized. Up, I certainly know that when I was a child, it was very bad to be gay. Okay, mm -hmm. If I had come out during high school, it would have been extremely dangerous for me. Right. Um, and I, I think I sort of carry that fear around. But one thing I've noticed among all my gay and lesbian couple friends, those, have been, those who have been together for a while, are all getting married right now. Mm -hmm. Every right. week there's another wedding to go to. So do you have this feeling, Carol, that as, as a lesbian woman, you've been, been waiting all your life to get married? Well, I've been waiting ever since um, Carol and I got together that to marry each other. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've, we've always wanted to be married. Right? Well, you, you have a picture of your oh, yes. wedding at the uh, Unitarian Universalist Church. Right, I brought this picture along because um, it's interesting. Susan and I always had um, the same length stride, but we always started out on opposite legs. And the, the minute we got legally married, we walked away from the altar on, with the same foot forward. It was like we were finally synchronized for the first time in our life. <laughs> and we, we looked at this picture and said, oh my gosh, that's incredible. We've never done that before. And we've noticed that ever since then, we've been walking that way. And we tend to anyway. And we tend to, and we never, we never did before. So is this symptomatic of, of sort of your relationship going to a different level? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I guess it is, yeah. Something's going on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're definitely feeling more in sync with each other. That's interesting. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of my gay couple friends do seem more in sync with each other than some of my heterosexual couple friends. And of course, you know, people maybe understand someone of the same gender better than they would understand someone of the opposite gender. But still, there seems to be something else at play there. I think it's partly because you, um, I think same gender couples are free of the constraints of gender roles that there's not a given that, well, he has to do the, take care of the car and the yard and take out the trash, and she has to do the laundry and the, the, and the dishes cooking. and the cooking and taking care of the kids, that uh, same gender couples are free to share based upon who's better and who likes doing uh, you know, re regardless of roles. So, so it's like we learn this recipe when we're little for relationships, and everybody thinks they have to follow the recipe, but same gender people toss out that recipe, it doesn't apply, and you have to make it on your own. Mm -hmm. One question uh, uh, you know, a lot of straight people ask of uh, same gender couples is, who acts like the man and who acts like the woman? Okay, well, um, Susan takes out the garbage and does the cooking. And I do the laundry and balance the checkbook. So, who changes the oil? <laughs> you tell me. Union seventy six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you take that to the mechanic. Yes, we do. <laughs> that sounds like a very healthy approach to me. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So the second time you got married, it's this this feeling of, of belonging more, belonging to the state, being in the right place. Right. It, it's it's just a much more positive feeling. It's. I mean, I think the, the way we felt in 2004 was this is an important 
historical moment. This is an important statement that we need to make. We want to be married. We know that it's probably not going to fly as far as you know permanent recognition of our marriage, but we need to be there. We need to go to City Hall. We need to get married and, um, you know, because it's something that we value. It's something that we, we want to do. But this time, I mean, all those things are still true. But it's no longer just an act of saying, well, we have to do it because we deserve to do it. We, we're doing it because we want to be married. I mean, yes, it's not a, it's not a political <laughs> it's act, not a but political act. you can get married now just like anyone else can, right. so why not? Right. And, and why not have a church wedding where, where, where you know, a congregation who, who loves you as people can right. participate? Exactly. I mean, we, 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 we've been wanting to be married, and, you know, there was no reason to wait once we were allowed to do it. We just <laughs> wanted to do it. Now, marriage under California laws gives you a lot of rights and responsibilities as a couple. A lot of people don't understand the, the huge number of laws that actually apply to marriage. It's several thousand laws under federal and state law. Mm -hmm. But here, some state laws apply, but not necessarily the federal laws, or definitely not the federal laws, since there's this Defense of Marriage Act that was passed. Right, none of the federal none of the benefits federal laws. apply. Um, so one question is, how does that impact your daily life? And in particular, everyone's nightmare. What about taxes? <laughs> it, it's a bigger nightmare than, than it was before. Um, this year, we had to file, and, and we will until the uh, federal government recognizes uh, our marriage, we file as if we're strangers for the, the federal. We file as single. But in the state, we file as a married couple. But in order to file our taxes in the state as a married couple, we had to, after doing our regular federal return, do a phantom return on which to base the state return. And do you actually file that phantom return with the state then? So they have all the No, the state doesn't see. The doesn't actually see the return. They just see well, the state return. Yes, they did. The, that's true. They do because when oh. you when you file the state return, you attach a copy of your federal return. So they had to attach a copy of the of your fake federal of the return. Fake federal return <laughs> right. because the oh man, I know. <laughs> and next year it gets worse. Right. But does it have any uh, you know repercussions for federal taxes? Though, because in this, no, what does a state report that you paid in terms of state tax? Well, that I don't comes know. up next year. Yeah, we don't oh. know. <laughs> we don't know how that's going to work out, but you know, it, it obviously is going to be complicated because, according to the state of California, our income is community property. According to the federal government, it's not. <laughs> so and, and so, we have to. Uh, we own our house together. Um, but we have to um, have a house account that we each contribute to 50%, and it has to be um, not just contributed to 50%, but documented, mm -hmm. um, because there are tax implications. So you may need an accountant. Oh, oh we, we have an, yeah. we've <laughs> always had an accountant. But, you know, for heterosexual couples, they n never have to deal with this level of scrutiny of their private everyday lives. I mean, the federal government has no business telling people, you know, how to spend their money on groceries or toilet paper or dog food. You know, it just should not be um, a matter of concern to the federal government at all. Right. And it's putting us in um, a situation where we have to be careful of how we spend our money so that, you know, I'm not giving Susan more than the amount that I'm allowed to every year so that I incur a gift a tax, or she incurs a gift tax, and it, you know it's just the federal government doesn't belong there. Right. So it's still very messy, and it would be much it's better if if your marriage were recognized exactly. by the federal government and other states, I guess. Yeah. But as uh, as bad as it is for uh, couples like us, binational couples are in an even worse state because um, uh, if the federal government recognized uh, same-sex marriage, then uh, a foreign 
national would be able to stay in this country, that the couples wouldn't be living in constant fear of being split up or having to move overseas where the couples are allowed to live together. Right. In fact, I, I'm aware of a binational couple here uh, who have a child together, but uh, the one woman is from overseas and uh, they're afraid to get married under California law because that might just raise their profile and cause one of them to be deported. Right. And rip the family apart. Exactly. Hmm. Wow. So there are a lot of considerations. There are yes. a, lot there of, considerations. a lot of legal considerations. And even if you do take all, go to the expense and the time and the trouble of um, taking the legal steps to, to get things covered, um, in the case of, say, medical uh, care, even if you have all those documents, short of marriage, you're, you're challenged. I mean, exactly. there, there was yeah. this couple in, in Florida where um, the family was traveling and um, one of the women took ill and the hospital would not allow um, her partner. Allow her partner to even visit her in the hospital. That was a tragic case. That was a tragedy. Well, I want to thank it's both horrible. of you so much for joining us. This, this, this was great. And uh, I, I wish you uh, a happy honeymoon wherever you go. <laughs> Thanks very much. And thank you very much for joining us. Join us again.